creative design and visual business. Business management ITS is a unique management major who combines management human science with ITS identity as an engineering campus. Students will gain technical skills and soft skills to prepare themselves as future business leaders. There are four major concentrations in business management of ITS, which are Operation Management and Business Analytics, Marketing and Entrepreneurship, Human Resource Management, and also accounting and finance to familiarize students with real business condition our department offers some project-based courses such as design thinking new venture creation socialpreneurship business consulting project internship and many others Business Management ITS offers International Undergraduate Program or IUP for both Indonesian and foreign students. Students will get lectures fully in English and greater opportunities to take part in international exposure activities. Our department also offers double degree programs. These particular programs are held in collaboration with the University of Queensland and Rand School of Business. Students will study at ITS and partner universities to get two undergraduate degrees. We provide students the opportunities to take international mobility activities such as excursion studies, exchange programs, short course programs, international internships, and many others. Our department will warmly welcome foreign students to experience these international exposure opportunities. To support those activities, Business Management ITS has several international partners. There are two laboratories to promote researches at Business Management ITS, which are Business Analytics and Strategy Laboratory and Entrepreneurship and Small Medium Enterprise Laboratory. Business Analytics and Strategy Laboratory or the BAS Laboratory focuses on Operation Management, Strategic Management, Finance, and Accounting. There are 10 lecturers and researchers associated with the BAS Laboratory. Business Analytics and Strategy Laboratory have several assistants to support its day-to-day -day operations. Entrepreneurship and Small Medium Enterprise Laboratory or the ESME Laboratory focuses on marketing, entrepreneurship, human resource management, performance measurement, and data envelope analysis. There are nine lecturers and researchers associated with the ESME laboratory. The Entrepreneurship and Small Medium Enterprise Laboratory 
also supported by several assistants to carry out the laboratory programs. Our department have more than 500 alumni. They work at different fields and industries such as national and multinational companies, government, or even became an entrepreneur. Let's join Business Management ITS and be the future business leader. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining uh, our Zoom meeting this afternoon. Uh, before we start our event today, please allow me to share the protocol of um, video conference. So, uh, the protocols are, first, please kindly adjust your name or ID screen using the format, your name, underscore department, or public. Second, during the video conference, we can only ask all participants to turn on the mute mode or turn off the audio, and only turn on the audio when MC or moderator gives suggestion. The third, we would like to recommend all participants to adjust the seat position comfortably and prevent the backlight effect. And the fourth, Please ensure your network has a stable internet connection for your convenience during the event. We recommend all participants to use a headset or an earphone. In addition, we kindly ask all participants to fill the online attendance and feedback through the link provided in the chat room at the middle of the session. You can also use raise hand feature and chat room if you have any question on Q&A session. Okay, uh, this event will be start soon. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, a very good morning to all of you. I would like to welcome you all do to the international guest lecture series, bringing the topic for today's lecture, the role of business analytics in operation management on this beautiful Tuesday, November 11, 2020. And maybe, and may the blessings of the medical be with us. My name is Dennis um, from the Department of Business Management will be the MC for today. Ladies and gentlemen, before going to the main event, I would like to invite one of our lecturers, Mr. Prahardika, to join us and lead today's agenda. Okay. Hello, everyone. Hello. Sir. Hello. My name is Prahardika Priyananto. Okay. Hello. My name is Prahardika Priyananto. I'm a lecturer in business management department. And today, I will become a moderator for this uh, international guest lecture. Before we go, we get the explanation about the role of business analytics in operation management. I would like to greet our I will greet our honorable guest lecturer today, Dr. Saadat. Hello, Dr. Saadat. Hello, yes, I'm, I'm really pleased to be around. Thank you so much. Okay, before we get the explanation from Dr. Saadat, I will uh, explain about our international, our 
Department International Program. Okay, could you see my presentation, everyone? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, okay. Uh, in business management of ITS, we have an international program. The title of program is International Under Undergraduate Program or IUP. In business management ETS, there are four concentration. The first one is operation management and business analytics. The second one is marketing management and entrepreneurship. The third one is human resource management. And the last is accounting and finance. Uh, our department have two options of double degree program. The first one is from Red School of Business, and the second one is from the University of Queensland, Australia. And beside uh, our double degree program, we have some international partner to support our international program. You, you can see our international partner here, and about the international guest lecture, we have already some international guest lecture series. And for today's lecture is from Dr. Saadat Al-Asmi. And the topic is the role of business analytics in operation management. Let me introduce uh, Dr. Saadat Al-Asmi. Dr. Saadat Al-Asmi is a associate professor in is information system of uh, College of Computing and Informatic Universitas of Sarjah Uni Emirate Arab. Before uh, current teaching experience, uh, Dr. Sadat have another teaching experience. Uh, the last one is uh, Associate Professor of Computer Science and Information information technology from Abu Dhabi University in Uni Emirate Arab. And uh, Dr. Saadat also have experience in Monash University Sunway Campus as a senior lecturer or head of school of information technology. Dr. Saadat uh, get his doctorate program in Computing and Management Science from Sifit Halam University, UK. And uh, beside the, his teaching experience, Dr. Sadat have many research grants. You can see some of them from here. I think enough for my explanation. Uh, the next uh, event is the explanation from Dr. Saadat about the role of business analytics in operation management. Okay, Dr. Saadat, time Thank is you. yours. Thank you so much. Uh, and it's, it's, it's an honor and a pleasure uh, to, to, to talk to you, uh, to talk to all of you. Uh, just before uh, I start, just want to make sure uh, you can see my screen now. Yes, yes. Dr. Saadat. Okay, yes, perfect. Okay, so uh, just uh, as I said before, uh, starting this as well, that I would highly encourage uh, students or anyone uh, to stop me at any time. Uh, it could be through moderator, moderator or, or uh, uh, that how you want to do that, but we really want this session to be very interactive. And I've prepared uh, slides pretty much 
thinking that I am uh, uh, talking to students, my own students, and uh, that's why we want this to be very interactive, and then you can ask questions and then uh, counter, uh, sort of argue on some of the things uh, I have. So what we will do uh, in the interest of uh, all the students uh, and, and uh, participants, uh, I will talk about some very basic uh, things and then uh, we will build on that. And uh, some more technical things, some more interesting things we can uh, bring into discussion because this is something I've been working on for last uh, few years. In fact, this was one of the topics I uh, studied even at my PhD level. So I've been involved in this for some time now. So uh, this is one of my uh, interests, right? So without further ado, uh, I will just move on. And this is one area which is moving so fast that if someone has missed some uh, uh, a year or two, it, it already feels as if uh, they are uh, in, in a, uh, from, from a different world. So we will we will move and uh, just in the interest so that we are all on the same uh, same page. What I will do, uh, I will talk. I will follow this agenda. We'll talk about in general what business analytics is, which I'm I'm pretty sure uh, most of you, especially those who are from uh, your business and operations point of view uh, from background, they will understand that. Uh, so we will talk about that. How is growing? What are some of uh, some of the data I used uh, recently in, in another talk as well. So uh, those who attended that talk may find uh, that as repetitive, but I still feel that's very important uh, to give you a feel of what's what's happening and how it's impacting pretty much everything we are doing, right? So we'll talk about uh, business analytics. We'll talk about operations management. We'll talk about issues in operations management because that's what it is. I mean, at the end of the day, we use anything to address some of the problems. If everything is fine, we don't do anything, right? We stay there. So there is a saying in English, they say, if it's ain't broke, don't fix it, right? So if something is not broken, if something uh, is not showing any strains and, and issues, we don't fix it, right? So that's exactly what is happening here. And then uh, from there, we'll move into a state of the art, what are uh, latest things uh, in, in this domain, what's happening. And then uh, I will talk about uh, the roadmap and, and some of the studies uh, which have been conducted by McKinsey and, and some other highly uh, interesting uh, sort of uh, consulting groups, which are pretty much in, in the lead, uh, lead of this, right? So this is basically uh, about uh, the, the tasks the we are talking about. So in general, when we talk about data, uh, it's, it's very clear, uh, if someone asks us uh, what is data, it's basically uh, analytics uh, where we have a lot of data and we are con uh, generating a lot of data all the time. Uh, so it's just that part uh, where we use a lot of data and using statistical or other approaches to understand what is happening with that data, right? And this thing is happening. It's not that data utilization has started uh, uh, two years ago. It has been there for, for almost ever since uh, at least uh, for thousands of years that how you use that data. But obviously the nature has changed. And nature change means that first of all, we are generating a lot more data. And because that more generation of data is happening digitally, I can analyze that. Previously when data was in papers or in, on, on barks or on a stone, uh, that's how it used to be written uh, hundreds of years ago. At that time, it was very, very difficult to analyze, right? So you can't see relationships. You have to actually fully uh, read that and things like that. At the same time, data generation was not that big as well at that time, right? So it wasn't, you can read a paper and so, and that's pretty much uh, about it. So the idea is that I use data to arrive at some decisions. So as a manager, especially those from business school, it's extremely crucial that as a manager, how would I use that data? That's, that's what it is, it's as simple as that, right? So to take that into uh, sort of uh, understanding, we will talk about uh, some of those issues that uh, what, what's happening. So within that, if you look at it, it, it goes across, uh, uh, across market, across 
industries and and we are generating a lot of data and especially your generation the students uh, generation uh, social media generation you are we are generating huge amount of data according to uh, last cisco uh, sort of uh, idea uh, prediction that by 2020 uh, we are almost end of that on an average one person is generating around Uh, 18 to 20 gigabytes of data every day and that's huge i mean just imagine your machines are typical uh, machine could be 5 uh, terabytes and things like that that would be filled uh, literally in few days that's the kind of data we are generating now when we are generating that data it's not just the volume of data it's also the variety of data so we are talking about text we are talking about uh, Uh, structured data unstructured data videos audios things like that uh, and then obviously uh, uh, things into and in, into 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 that uh, area so some of the studies they talk about uh, data into four v's there are some studies we say we say uh, six v's uh, but the idea is that we are generating huge amount of data and if we don't use that data if we don't understand the use of data uh it's just not going to work and and uh, while at this stage it reminds me a very quick and interesting example uh almost uh, 12 years ago uh, one oil and gas company they approached us and they said we are generating huge amount of data and they wanted us to help them to understand different aspects so they had sensors in the oil rigs all over and they were generating data and at that time uh, when we inquired we found out how much data they are generating they were generating at that time around 2 uh, gigabytes of data every second and just looking at that volume we said we just don't have resources to store i am talking about this pre cloud era no not this era so we thought that we can't take that uh, kind of uh, assignment for consulting because we just can't handle that amount of data with the resources we had and we missed that opportunity now looking back now uh, almost after 12 years i can see that that's how things have moved now uh, i can literally uh, click a button and i have access to all the data in, in the world and all the access to storage and all that on on google cloud uh, or on amazon or uh, aws or 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 on apple cloud and things like that right so again what we are trying to say here is that the volume of data and all that has given us challenge uh, but also massive opportunity and it's more of an opportunity that's what we have to see as as business students that it's an opportunity that how would i use that data in order to make me ahead than my competitors is as simple as that and because technology has become so embedded in, in the way we do things uh if we don't use the right tools if you don't use the right technology our competitors will and what will happen we will we will lose that battle right so this is what we really need to understand when we are talking about uh, this this part now here is a simple uh, an interesting uh, sort of uh, uh, spread uh, you can see that how much data we are generating uh, on a daily basis and that can give you an idea that most of them you will find it it comes into the way we are using so if you look at that uh, according to uh, world economic forum we see 500 million tweets every day 294 billion emails 5 petabytes of data on facebook 5 4 terabytes data on on uh, connected cars and this is again something growing extremely fast and then 65 billion messages are sent every day right and 5 billion searches are made on uh, on on google mainly but other other search engines as well google has around 80 85% share so this is the kind of data we are talking about now a very simple question someone uh, could ask well but what this has to do with me what i am doing and uh, this is exactly the point that if you are not connected if you are not understanding the technologies and approaches to understand this you will lose it right so if you have a facebook page which almost all companies have if you have a linkedin page if you have a twitter account instagram account snapchat account you are generating data 
your customers are generating data. So what you need to do, you need to understand what's happening and then bring that into your operations management. That's exactly the key. So if trend is changing outside, you have to understand that and bring that trend into your operations because that will sooner or later, in fact, sooner rather than later would impact your uh, operations. Because if trend is changing, if the demand is changing, if people are talking negative about uh, your product outside, it will impact immediately. Likewise, if there, there's an issue with, uh, with, with the data outside where people are really talking about positive about, uh, you have issues, right? So this is the idea, that's why it's very crucial for us to understand and combine those two things. Okay, so here I'll just take a, a, a pause for, for a minute or so, or maybe even less. If, if there's any questions or clarifications anyone has before we move, any quick question? Any quick question from our moderator? Has anyone said anything? Okay, I think there are no questions, but this is an interesting topic, yes. Right, okay. No, that's <laughs> fine, that's fine. So just you can uh, uh, encourage the students if there's any questions, they can uh, they can just uh, uh, send you a message and so that if I stop time to time, they can, uh, they can can uh, their question can be addressed there and then. Okay, student, if okay. you are have a question about the topic, you can ask directly, to, you can raise your hand or you can type your question in the chat box. Right. And, and just another quick question. I presume I'm not uh, going either very fast or very slow. Uh, it's at the, at the right pace because I often get this that I speak very fast. So uh, uh, if I'm not going very fast uh, in terms of uh, uh, my addiction or then that's fine. I'll just continue with that. Okay. So as I said, this is what it is. And uh, companies, if you look at companies like Nike, if you look at companies like Cisco, all of them, they have burned their fingers. Uh, they have lost billions of dollars just because they could not understand uh, their demand uh, properly and things like that. So it's all boils down to understanding and they, they end up producing more, uh, some of the things they were doing. So these are all issues we really need to uh, understand and then take into, uh, into consideration. Now, in terms of uh, data, if you look at it, we have uh, this, as we said, technology evolved. It, it has not evolved in the last two, three years. It evolved uh, from 60s. Uh, uh, it was used in, the, uh, in our administrative systems, financial systems, uh, in, in clinical and administrative, and then all those uh, things. These are all, all issues happening. Uh, and uh, now we are in a stage where we can understand and and uh, and get the trends right and, and things like that so this is this is the idea behind it that it has evolved it's, it's not something which happened uh, uh, only uh, recently now just to take uh, a step back and and look at it that okay in simple terms if someone asks us what is operations management obviously there are uh, hundreds of ways of explaining that but in very simple terms one can say that uh, operations management is an area which concerns with controlling and designing the process of business operations. Very simple. That whatever we are doing, uh, we need to look at it that, okay, how is it designed? And then it should eventually produce a goods or a service. So if it's a, it's a manufacturing company, if a company which is making uh, uh, phones, it could be iPhone, it could be it's about that good. And then services, it could be a service industry, it could be healthcare industry, it could be anything. Again, the idea is that I want to understand how things are, are working. And all the time, we need to see that where is my uh, process in terms of my competitors. Because if my process is slow, if my process is expensive, if my process is not uh, nimble and receptive uh, and, and uh, then what will happen? We will, we will end up being less competitive. So we are bringing in technology, not because we like it or love it. We are bringing in technology to be ahead of our competitors. And 
now what is happening outside is directly impacting it is directly impacting us so we really need to benchmark all the time so if my product is is having issues uh, in terms of the timeline in terms of quality uh, then obviously uh, we will we will have uh, serious issues there now if you look at some of those things uh, where operations management is i mean there are so many other things but just here uh we can look at operations management in job design a new product how can we do that in understanding uh faster turnaround of design and things like that how can we do scheduling uh which product should be uh sort of uh, uh manufactured or service and things like that likewise uh, materials management uh, capacity management facilities management quality management these are all issues where operation management is 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 uh, obviously uh, looks into so these are all parts of operation management right so what we are trying to do is that at every stage it gives us an idea that how am i going to do that particular job with the data we have with the information we have and we do that much better and if you look at very simple examples if you look at uh, if some of you may remember uh, few years ago we had uh, this uh, uh, samsung note issue where uh, Sam samsung uh, notes was exploding and uh, people don't realize it was obviously there were issues uh, but it was one could say a scheduling issue and scheduling issue was that they had to come up with their phone in the market before iphone because if you if you recall what happens is in west especially the peak time of selling is uh, seasons uh, uh, end of season christmas period new years uh, period that's when most of the people upgrade their phones uh, uh, buy new products and samsung was trying to come into the market with their phone with a very successful phone before uh, before apple and with that what happened they cut in a way one could say uh, Uh, they in a way cut corner uh, to go into the market they, they they did not do proper testing and what happened the gap between the the, the battery and and the uh, and and the covering wasn't that enough and and the battery was heating up and eventually uh, it was it, it was exploding and obviously everyone knows it was a disaster for samsung they lost uh, close to 20 billion dollars because of this this thing right so we have pressure we are not in their in our own on zone uh, thinking that look uh, uh, i can do whatever i like we have constant pressure from our competitors but also from our customers now if we have the right information if we use those things really well then we can plan and then look into that what 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 is really happening and what what are some of the issues uh, we are talking about now as we said before operations management could be anywhere it could be a restaurant uh, you can think of uh, mcdonalds uh, you can think of uh, pizza hut you can think of dominos you look at their processes right uh, it could be even your university admission process it could be uh, nuclear power generation it could be automobile production anything uh, and everything has process and that's all as a company you have to manage operations so when we look and compare mcdonalds with uh, another less successful or a smaller company when you really look at it it's basically their operations and how that those operations are connected to their supply chain management and the difference between one company and another company is that how good they are in terms of using those uh, processes making their processes more efficient making those those uh, processes lean and 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 nimble in a way that if demand changes uh, they quickly uh, turn on on to that so it's it's very very crucial to to get this right okay now from there we will move into and and try to understand that okay what are basically uh, some of those things so in very simple terms a very very simple thing that you have a process and obviously uh, in process what happens so if it's a burger that's what your uh, thing is so you get all the inputs whatever goes in, in your burger right uh, and from there this is the output right now one burger shop and another shop the only difference is that how they transform that everyone has to get the same ingredients similar ingredients 
And this is exactly the difference between uh, McDonald's and difference between uh, Burger King or difference between uh, another small shop is that how they do that. And the more efficient, the more uh, advanced they are in terms of understanding what people are looking for and things like that, uh, the more uh, better their operation is, is, is going to be, right? So that's, uh, that, that's the part we, we are talking about here. Okay, just a quick uh, stop. I'll stop here again for a minute. Uh, any, any comments so far? Any questions? Has anyone raised any question? No question so far? I think still no question, Dr. Okay. Sadio. That's fine. Perfect, perfect. Okay. So this is the kind of thing we are talking about here, that our input of what we are doing is all our ingredients. Now, if you go back further here in the inputs, we need to make sure that how much fit you order, uh, how would we store that, and all that would have a cost. If you ordered more for storage, then that will increase your cost and your transformation uh, uh, would be same, but your output would be more expensive. So operations right in the middle is linked to so many other things. Likewise, if you don't understand what is happening on the output side, what your uh, customers are looking, their preferences, demands, and things like that, if you don't understand that will also have impact on your uh, operations. So operation is pretty much the heart of any business. So when you compare two businesses, what you're looking at is that how good one company operation and, and link with their suppliers and link with their CRM customer relationship management is that there's a full line. So on the right side, output side, you have CRM customer relationship and in the middle you have operations and on the left side uh, is your uh, SCM. And if those things are linked, uh, then obviously you're fine all the time. You're on, on track of, of doing things. So this is very, very crucial. So just to give you an example, uh, if you think about uh, Domino's or if you think about uh, uh, Pizza Hut, uh, if they give offers, uh, I don't know if you have this offer and in Malaysia we have this, uh, we used to have this, uh, that uh, if you don't receive their uh, uh, pizza within 30 minutes, they will give you one free pizza, right? So imagine they have to predict the demand. If demand goes up and they could not supply that through their operations, what will happen? They will start losing money every time they're receiving order. They cannot deliver that in 30 minutes. What will happen? They will lose money, right? So they really need to understand that what offer, what is the likelihood of that success and things like that. And they will quickly transform that into something which is really going to uh, make uh, make huge uh, difference here. And that's how they are day in, day out uh, successful. Now, just to give you an example, and then we will move on. So we are living in an era where people are expecting mass customization, right? So previously, everything was about mass production. So you produce more of the same things, you reduce cost, and that's it, you're successful. So there's a very famous saying from Henry Ford, the founder of Ford Car Company. He said very famously, any customer can have a car painted any color that they, he wants, so long it is black. Now what it means is that when mass production of car, uh, Ford was the first company to produce mass cars. Cars were there before, but they were made in small batches and things like that. So there were issues with the operations, variety, and it was expensive. And he came up with this idea that, look, we will make uh, produce mass cars, mass production, but we will paint only black. So there will not be any variety whatsoever. And obviously with that, what happened, they drive the cost down. And when they drive the cost down, more people start buying cars and car became almost from a, uh, from a luxury to, to a necessity, right? So it, it changed the game that way, which was fine, perfect at that time. But now we want customization. We want uh, uh, different things. So if you look at some of the luxury cars, uh, uh, you may have thousands of, of uh, hundreds of thousands of variety there. Uh, 
where you can choose the color of your steering, the, the, the design of your steering, and then all that, interiors, exteriors, your signature and things like that. Now, all that is possible now because we have made our operations in such a way that we can understand what's happening. And based on that, we, we can do that. So we are heading in that di direction where people want customization and personalization. So if you look at uh, on, on digital media, for example, on your Facebook and on, on your uh, uh, other media. Now, the page you go to, the wall you go to is customized for you. But if you go back 15 years ago, even our web pages were static. It was same for everyone. But the reason it happened is that now behind the scene, the way operations work in companies like Facebook and, and all those companies, the way it's working, it has this capacity that it customizes things, personalize things at individual level. And this is the power of uh, analytics, power of, of data. Uh, this has, has really uh, changed uh, that, that game uh, to, 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 this, uh, to this level. So we really need to understand this part if, if we want to be successful. Days uh, when we were producing same thing again and again for 10, 15 years are gone. And, and customers not only want mass customized uh, products, but they also want new products coming out every year, every eight to 10 months, 12 months maximum. They want something, something new. And especially uh, students, your generation, uh, anything which is even one year old, uh, we, we call it, oh, that's very old. That's so 219, uh, uh, so so 19-ish kind of thing. So this has completely changed uh, that aspect. And operations management, as we said, plays right in the middle, uh, all, all the game, uh, what's, what's happening. Now, how can business analytics? So we talked about all that. We talked about all the issues. Uh, related to that, but we really need to understand now that how is it uh, sort of helping operations management, right? Uh, so we, in general, we talked about, but if you look at some of those aspects uh, in terms of processes we are doing, so we have a lot of inefficient paper processes still. Uh, we have still uh, working, different department working in, in, in a silos, not connecting communication and understanding what impact uh, one department could have on another department. So poor management of data, bottleneck issues, a lot of time we, we a marketing department without consulting operations may, uh, may ask for some, may float some uh, uh, offers without realizing that they may not have capacity to make that much or they have capacity, but their suppliers don't have the capacity to, uh, to look into that. So we really need to understand that. Uh, besides that, we also need to see that how do we utilize our uh, workers. So if I am not utilizing my workers well in my factory or in my hospital, what will happen? It will drive up the cost. So I really need to make sure that how I schedule workers, how do I make sure that everyone is, is, is working uh, 95 to uh, ideally 100% all the time and then things like that. Likewise, what could be uh, some uh, healthy and safe uh, compliances and things like that. So these are all issues. And at every stage, we are generating huge amount of data. So we really need to understand and get those things uh, right and, and understand that. So very clearly, uh, according to Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development, uh, very, very simple uh, word to say the same thing uh, I was trying to explain earlier. The exploitation of data promises to create added value in a variety of operations, ranging from optimizing the value chain and manufacturing production to more efficient use of labor and better customer relationships. So if I can do that, then I am fine. But I, I, I have to do that not only better, but I also need to understand that my uh, aspect is better than my competitors. That is the key thing. That is really the key thing. Okay, and any questions? Someone was uh, trying to say something or open their mic? Okay, that's fine. Okay, so some of the trends uh, which I really want to uh, quickly highlight and then hopefully we will come back to them with more uh, information is, is IoT, Internet of Things. 
I'm sure you have heard these uh, these words. 5G is already there in some company, uh, some countries, uh, and they are testing. But 6G is also coming, uh, not very far. China recently launched uh, their 6G at a test level, which is going to be 100 times faster than 5G. So what it means that it will generate even more uh, data. And when it will generate even more data, I mean, 5G is already massive, massive uh, amount of data is generated, but uh, 6G would be even more. The quality of, of things would, would uh, improve. So how would I handle that? So these are the things I really need to do that. Then hyper automation. This is something which is happening and we will talk uh, very quickly later on that uh, COVID-19 has also pushed us uh, that whatever can be automated is automating everything. Uh, so that's something we need to uh, look at it. Uh, massive reduction of product life. So as we said before, that life cycle of product is increasing. That means demands of product is increasing. And then the, uh, the features people expect uh, a lot more at less price. So how would I do that? So that's something I really need to do that. Customers are a lot more informed again. So I can't uh, fool my customers. Uh, in a sense that give them same thing. I mean, even if you go to small towns and villages, uh, uh, you will find out that people understand about products a lot more, right? So you can't fool them. And response time. Response time is something people are really expecting. And, and the idea is that if possible, they want answers on a yesterday basis. Obviously it's a joke. Uh, you can't tell yesterday basis, but it tells you that people are impatient, customers are impatient. If there is something, they want answers there and then. Now, how as a company, you will have your operations management in a way where you can respond pretty much uh, on, on that basis. And that drives us to something which is uh, what we are talking about uh, last part, which is predictive remedies. That companies are already using this that before anything happens, I can predict that, right? So, so some of you may have heard about this, that all that is leading is predictive. So if something went wrong and then address it, it's already late. If someone had a problem and then you solved it, it's already late, everyone does it. This is fine. But what people are saying is that you try to identify that someone may have problem. And then at that stage, you solve them or counter that before uh, they raise a, a complaint. And some of the examples I'll quickly mention about here is that, for example, predictive maintenance, companies like General Electric, companies like Verizon and all that, what they're doing is they are constantly monitoring their engines, uh, very expensive uh, aeroplane engines and medical devices on and all. And before anything goes wrong, they know that this is about to happen and they will schedule that so that that can be addressed rather than when something breaks down. Because if something breaks down unplanned, that is very expensive. It, so what you do, you really need to look into the predictive and that's where again, the business analytics and data analytics plays a very, very big role that how I'm going to do that. So this is again, something you need to look at. So maintenance, churn rate, uh, so for example, Verizon and now a lot of other companies are also doing that they are trying to identify the churn rate that before someone leaves, they will get, get an indication from the data that what is likelihood of someone may leave that company, move to another uh, mobile operator. So if I know someone is about to leave, it's easier to give them counter offers or some something and address their concern uh, rather than someone who has already left. So the rate within mobile industry is, is very high. Churn rate is very high because companies come up with uh, new plans and, and uh, things like that all the time. So what we are trying to do, we are trying to understand that. Again, they have built that based on the previous data and they, that helps them to operationalize that and their churn rate is a lot less than their competitors. And if that's the case, what will happen? That will drive your cost down. So again, uh, from the data, you can work into your operations, what's happening, 
what is the likelihood and then uh, you look into that because we all know especially from business point of view acquisition cost getting new customers is lot more expensive higher than retaining customers so retaining customers is 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 lot easier and if i know someone is not comfortable i can address that much much uh, before so uh, according to uh, mckenzie uh, what is happening now is the digital moment everyone is on digital and we really need to look at everything uh, to be digitized we really need to seize that moment and if we don't do that what will happen our competitors will do either in our own country or somewhere else because competition is global now and if we don't do that we will lose uh, what is uh, about to happen from there we need to understand uh, we have to drive uh, digital enterprise wise but not only at department level functions level but across and find relationships that what happens uh, if drive if, if uh, customer demand goes up or what what happens if customer demand uh, goes down and things like that and then we realign that we we said that with our customer uh, bag that okay what customer is really uh, looking for and what their demands are and things like that we we do that and all that should ideally create you as a business student business uh, school students to become thought leaders because your decisions now would be based on data rather than uh, hearing things here and there it's it be pretty much based on the data so that will help you to understand that as well so we almost towards the end uh, so i'll just uh, move into that so now what happened has uh, as i said covid has created a very massive imperative for companies right and they have to really think about their operations so not only their operations but they also need to think that it provides them because good people always look crisis as an opportunity so we we don't see that as something bad obviously uh, it's hurting it is not uh, a good thing but we need to see always in in positive light that what is good we can bring out of it right that's what it is otherwise if we only think doom and gloom and nothing will change world will will, will not be a good place to live so we really need to look into that part that how would i do that from that aspect we will look into that how can i make my operations resilient right how do i make that that my operations whatever i am doing it could be delivery of of things it could be manufacturing of some things it could be uh, things related to uh, certain operations i really need to look into that and we need to find out what are still some of those issues which are not digitized right so we really need to look into end to end digitization so as an organization if we have things digitized i can see that pretty much on my blackboard what's happening what are bottlenecks and then i can literally take uh, quick decisions there and then it should also help us because when we are automating hopefully and if it's done properly it would help uh understand uh, and make things more transparent and transparency is always good uh, because people can look at it people can comment on it uh, on on it and things like that and that is something which should drive uh, our work to the future because if in this day and age someone says well digitization and and uh, playing around with our data will not help uh, especially in operations then that means uh, we should avoid uh, that kind of person and we should avoid that kind of thinking it's, it's very very important so all that should make us think that we reimagine in a way that how can we create something sustainable which will not only be good but also advantage and if you look at it i mean uh, one year ago companies like zoom and all they were almost unheard of very few people heard about it but it completely transformed we could have uh, things here we could have lectures here all all over and that what it is so everyone has an opportunity to see that how we can do that and how it would give advantage now competitive advantage is only up to a point 
anything beyond that because other people can can replicate so you need to be ahead of your competitors all the time being innovative and things like that reimagining uh whatever you are doing constantly reinvent uh, whatever you are doing constantly so this is uh, we should see that as an opportunity and and, and look into uh, those kind of things so having said that uh, this is pretty much the the, the la last slide uh, so so much advances especially 4 to 5 years but even this year i, I could say this year alone has taught us and and uh, pushed things so fast so hard so hard that we really need to uh, think again and reflect that where my role would be lot of jobs uh, which you are looking around and seeing they may not be here by uh, there by the time you will go uh, according to later studies uh 90% of the job other studies say 70% of the jobs which you see around now will not be there 5 years down the line but one thing is sure we will have lot more data we really need to understand what's happening and and bring that into whatever we are doing uh at operation level and and use that to be ahead uh, of that we also need to see that how people use it people really don't care what technology that you are using what they care is that how that particular thing which you made uh, either as a product or as a service is helping them so empathy is extremely extremely crucial part to understand that and often uh, when technology uh, people they they come and they push about technology they 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 miss this point that uh, they don't realize that how people are using that and that's very very interesting so if you get that right uh, by understanding uh, then that will completely change uh, uh, your thinking and also give you an advantage uh, of uh, where you are uh, with this final i'm sure you have you have heard this one size fits all those days are definitely gone and people are expecting a uh, lot more uh, in terms of uh, customization uh, everyone wants something unique different uh, but at at the same time without uh, paying more so you really need to uh, think about that so it, it becomes uh, in a way uh, technology becomes a double edged sword in a way for you that look it's it's helping you but at the same time uh, competitors can also use that and then literally out of nowhere someone who had nothing uh no history no background they came into the arena and they became so big right so if you look at some companies like whatsapp snapchat and all they were not there few years ago and very small set of people 15 20 people they set together they uh, created their own operations they said look we will not buy any hardware we will work on google cloud we will work on amazon cloud they created that and literally a company which had only less than 20 people was sold for close to 19 billion dollars and it was all purely operations they realized what we are good at it they focused on that and based on that they behind the scene they connected other companies and made their operations so efficient so cheap that uh, competitors even companies like google and all could not do that because they became uh, far too big and their operations become too expensive right so you have an opportunity now you look at things around you and you see that how can i transform that operation uh and using the right technology using the right set of data and give that as an advantage to my uh, competitor and this reminds me something very interesting a simple example uh, and then a simple story and then uh, we will really move on to next uh, sort of uh, q and a session uh, way back there's a company called walmart uh, i'm sure you all know walmart i think was in indonesia as well if i'm not mistaken uh, and they, they i think they exited walmart bought a company in uk called asda they bought this company and very interestingly walmart and asda they used though both used to get one christmas tree from the same company in china and it was very interesting it was costing walmart 14 dollars around that and same christmas tree was costing 18 dollars around that to asda 
And the difference was in the way it was operations. And if you look at it, if you are getting something cheaper, then you already have an advantage. ASDA cannot sell it at a profit less than $18. But Walmart can sell it for $15 and still make $1 profit. So by making their operations efficient, they have driven, they, they drove the cost down and that gave an advantage. And this is how you need to look everything around you that what I can do better, I do that. What someone else can do better, I will work with them, combine my operations with that and come up with, with a process which is more agile, which is more uh, competitive, nimble in a way and, and uh, gives me an advantage compared to uh, my competitors, right? So I think with that, uh, pretty much uh, I am done. Uh, thank you very much. And I'm, I'm really uh, happy to take your questions at this stage. So over to you. Uh. Okay. <clears throat> thank you, Dr. Sadat, for your uh, explanation. I think it's very interesting topic. As we know that today is a um, digital era and we cannot... Uh, we cannot, uh, our people will use internet and social media, etc. Yeah. And we know that uh, the debt, the volume of data will can be used for the operation for many organizations. Yeah. As today is the digital era, right? Yeah. Okay. Are there any questions from the other participant. Okay. Uh, maybe I have uh, one question about yeah. uh, this topic. Uh, especially for in the pandemic of COVID-19, how we can get the benefit from data, especially for operation management, if we have to deal with the very unexpected event like the COVID-19? Yeah. Yeah, so that's a very interesting uh, and, and good question. The idea here is that there are certain things which so COVID-19 came, people could not, people never thought, right? It came and then this is one in a lifetime kind of uh, incident happened. So what we need to do is if, if our organization is, is digital and nimble, what happens, the only thing is that I can very quickly move to something else. If my organization is not digital, if I'm still doing a lot of things manually, I will, not, I will be slow in responding to my customers. I will be slow in understanding where demands are changing. So it will not prepare uh, us as such that, okay, what I will do, but it will help us to understand that I can quickly change because I can get data faster than my competitors. So this, this is the idea behind it. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Saadat, for your explanation. I think there is a great insight from your explanation. And I think there are one question from Imran Ghazali. Yeah, please, yes. Imran Ghazali, are you there? Oh, okay. There is no answer. Yes, I'm there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Yes, please, Imran. Okay. Uh, the question is, uh, could you explain more about the implementation of business analytics in chemical process manufacturing? In chemical process? Maybe artificial intelligence? Yeah, yeah. So, could it's, you it's very interesting. Yeah, yeah, so it's very interesting. So what's happening at, in, in process, at every stage you are collecting data. Right, so if it could be, as I said, it could be any process, we are collecting data at every stage. So when we are collecting data at every stage, we are trying to find out the relationship between different aspects. Once we get that, then we use that into our operations improvement. So let, let, let me give a very simple but different example just to uh, clarify that, and then we will come back to uh, chemical. 
So imagine I have a data that when temperature rises somewhere, it impacts something else, right? So now what, we, what is happening, we are constantly collecting that information at every level, either through sensors, through IOTs, through whatever, we are collecting data at every level. Now, as humans, I cannot see the relationship between them. But through business analytics, through uh, data, uh, we can see the relationship between one aspect and to another, and that could help us to understand. So as I said, just to give you a very famous uh, example, often used uh, in teaching uh, uh, logistics, is that in, uh, in US, what happened in Walmart, they did a, a study, uh, they were looking at uh, that the relationship between different products. And they found out that there is a direct link between diapers, which kids wear, right? And, and beer. And they said, well, what is the relationship between these two? They, they, you can't see a relationship, a diaper, which is, is, is worn by someone who's a six months, eight year old and the relationship. And to test that hypothesis, they put those things together in a supermarket and they found out the sale of beer went up. And as I said, this is an interesting example to tell that because they were selling millions of products, as humans, we cannot see those relationships, but data could see those relationships and, and similar thing could happen uh, exactly on our side when, when we talk about uh, uh, chemical process, uh, we can talk about uh, manufacturing, whatever, as long as we are collecting data at every stage, we can through uh, softwares, we can see the relationships and that's how it can help. Imran, is it clear? Well, was this your question? Uh, is that, is that okay, what clear, you- Clear, sir. Thank you, yeah. sir. Thank you. Okay. Are there any questions from Mr. Faiz? Okay, well, sir, thank you uh, for this chance. Well, I have a question regarding this. So I see like uh, when you deliver this lecture, maybe like uh, most of your opinion regarding the advantages of uh, using data in the operation management. But of course, I think there are some disadvantages if we are using or rely on too much on data, then it, it might be have a lot, uh, some disadvantages on that. Uh, so what do you think? What is the disadvantages when we are using too much data in the operation management? Is there will be bring a harm effects to the company or maybe to the workers? So it's, it's a very, very good question. I was expecting someone would ask this. So uh, thank you so much. It's a very good question. Now, like everything uh, we have, this also has its advantages. Privacy is an issue. Uh, if you don't have processes set up right, uh, and if something goes wrong, the whole uh, thing could collapse because we are relying purely on data. And that's why, uh, while uh, in this lecture, I talked about the advantages you rightly pointed out, but that's why the way I see future is that you have a combination of humans using data. You're not taking out the humans completely out of the picture. Human is there, but using that data to take advantage and make fast decisions. Now, we cannot say that we will go in an era where we will not use data. That is completely out of the picture. But if we train people to use data, but at the end of the day, human is responsible, human is taking the final decision, then we have the best of both worlds. But if not, if you are purely relying on data and all the decisions are coming from that, then we have issues because, uh, and there are a lot of examples. If you look at, uh, for example, Google, a few years ago, uh, they proposed uh, uh, Google uh, epidemic that based on what people are searching on Google, uh, it can tell you that uh, is there is an epidemic in that area or not. So for example, if a lot of people are saying they have a, a, a pain in their stomach from one area, say in, 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 in Jakarta, uh, for example, if a lot of searches are coming about that particular thing, people can sort of relate that, that there is something wrong in that particular area. And they predicted that and they said that could help. But later on, they realized that because el algorithms work sometimes in a very funny way, and it could have a domino effect. 
And what happened? It drive more searches and more searches until it goes out of and start giving you wrong answers. So if human is working with that data and then knows that look there is something wrong here and sort of uh, do that, then it's 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 uh, that's where we are uh, we are heading, and that's what we should be trained for, rather than purely relying on data. I hope I answered that uh, your your question. Okay, yeah, yeah. Thank you, doctor. I think it sounds fair. But uh, one thing that uh, I think it it will be more interesting. You said that we we cannot remove entirely the human roles in the data, but of course, by using the big data, we will have more and more automation in that process. So it means like uh, we will decrease uh, the number of workers, and of course, it will bring the social impact also. What do you think uh, to deal with this problem? Because um, maybe it will decrease the number of worker and it will increase the unemployment rate between that workers. Yeah, and that's again, a very interesting uh, concern and question. And that's being raised by all people, even people like Bill Gates and Elon Musk, they have raised this concern that what will happen. But thing is, unless and until it happens at a higher level uh, where you tax robots and automation and things like that, we have very less incentive to still carry out processes manually when our competitor, maybe in our own country or somewhere else, is relying on automation. So we will have very less advantage on, on, on that kind of thing. So we really need to balance that but again, when you are in business, you want to be the best. Otherwise, just you are not uh, a social. Okay, government can decide some of those social services. But as a business, if we are producing a, an iPhone, I want to produce the best iPhone at the cheapest cost. I'm not producing iPhone to, uh, for employment. Right? So this is something we really need to balance. And as, as you said, it's, it's a concern. And we are heading towards these serious issues, uh, 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 mass unemployment and things like that. So it's already, uh, these things are there and serious. So we really need to think that, uh, are we going to go for uh, social security, uh, going to go for social uh, uh, pension for everyone and things like that, at least basic pensions and things like that, that has to be done at that level, but definitely uh, technology is, is in, in full uh, throttle. Things are happening, destroying jobs. Every new robot which comes into Amazon uh, uh, warehouse, it takes away two jobs. And that kind of thing is happening everywhere in automation and car industry, autonomous cars are coming, what will happen to uh, taxi drivers and things like that. So it's a serious thing. It's a real serious thing and has to be discuss and work that at, at maybe UN level and things like that. It's a serious issue. Okay, yeah. Uh, thank you, Dr. Zadat. That's uh, yeah, really interesting uh, answer for me. Yeah, that's, I agree with you that become a trade-off for the company. In other case, they want to keep the production can running well, keep profitable, but in other case, maybe they need to decrease the number of the worker because they already have an automation yes. that's actually yeah, always a bring social issue anyway so yes. i think uh, for all students this is the the interesting insights from dr sada that maybe you need to also have a skills to do like a simple skills of the data analysis and yeah because in the future i think this work area will be uh, will be more and more needed by the company so yeah. students, do you have uh, any questions? Uh, I expect you will deliver more and more interesting questions. Yeah. So just to give you one quick example, and then while we are waiting for students, uh, uh, you know, in clothing industry, uh, so companies like Gap, Mark Spencer, Levi, all of them, they produce, uh, they are manufactured, uh, stitched, their clothes are stitched all over in Indonesia, in India, in Bangladesh, China, those places. And these companies, they are so ruthless. If the cost of production in another country is less than five cents, they will just move. So if your process is not efficient and quality, uh, then, then you lose it. And students should definitely learn some basic data analytics. Now there are softwares, 
uh, very simple softwares like rapid miner and all they, they they can literally learn in few days basic analysis uh, so they, they should definitely learn no matter what the background is okay uh, thank you dr sadat for yes man i think we have uh, one questions here from nada so nada maybe you have uh you can open mic if you want and open your cam and ask directly to dr sadat uh yeah okay uh, hello mr sadat i have a question for you uh, does operation management also need marketing management data uh, for example the changes in consumer behavior or consumer favor maybe Thank yes you. yes yes definitely definitely uh, you need that because you need to connect that and as a company you need to see uh, the customer management data what's happening at that end and then if they are pretty aligned uh, and then linked to each other then your your production will directly uh, be linked you are not producing something based on predictions you are uh, doing that pretty much what customers are doing in fact now it's moving even to next stage where you are connecting even to social media what people are talking about Uh, that kind of product so you are linking uh, this is again an area a uh, lot of companies have already started that linking that to social media not just your own customers but what is this being discussed in social media about that kind of product and that has an impact on your operations as well so everything is connected that's what it is does this answer your question nada yeah it's clear now thank you mr Okay, thank you, Dr. Sajid, for your explanation. I think it's right that uh, the consumer data or marketing data will be used for the des design the product or the services for the company. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Another question from other participant. Um, can I ask a question for Mr. Sajid? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, my name is Dennis. Uh, I want to ask about how does the uh, implication of business analytics and big data technology can um, overcome the operational problem, maybe in the product development, yeah. maybe? Sorry, your voice is not clear. Sorry, uh, can you repeat oh. your question? Uh, can you please repeat your question? Your voice is not clear. Uh, how does the the implication of business analytics and big data technology can uh, overcome the operational problem like product development, uh, it's like leading customer to our new product or maybe it's like establishing a uh, initial price? Like, yeah. thank you. Right. Yeah. So that again, uh, that's a very interesting question. So big data is again when we are talking about data now, it's it's more more and more about big data. So. lot of data is being generated outside and that can tell you and give you insights on the trends so if you go back and look at companies like even makeup companies like l'oreal and all that they are very customer uh, focused companies but they sell most of their products through supermarkets right and they are dependent on on that but how would they understand the customers what customers are looking for is through analysis of big data on their social media social profile and that is helping them to design new products right so data is basically telling you what people are questioning what people are liking not liking what are trends there and then you bring that into your operations not only in designing new products but also in in operations to make it more efficient and things like that so there's a direct link So the more data you are generating, which is happening uh, all the time, especially with social media, uh, it, it's it's really helping you to design uh, and then have a direct impact on that. In fact, L'Oreal is is moving towards uh, just to give you an example. Some other companies are also doing uh, that they will have their products, new products designed almost up to forty percent. Products will be designed based on. what people are discussing and suggesting previously that was done internally that was done internally by their own design and engineers right uh, makeup artists and things like that but now around 40% that's what they're aiming that will be designed based on what people are discussing and talking about outside 
on social media and things like to those platforms so it's completely changing the, the game is completely changing we really need to be on top of those things okay thank you sir for i wrote a note with a uh, new insight for me thank you okay Any other question? Okay. Any other question? Are people tired? Tired uh, looking at me and <laughs> hearing my voice for so long? <laughs> They just tired. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think there is uh, one question from Zalfa. Yeah, Zalfa, you can uh, open your mic. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. So my name is Alfa. I want to ask Dr. Sadat regarding to the condition in Indonesia. So this kind of business process is very applicable for the big companies because this is a very important thing to do. But what about the small businesses? Because as far as I know, and this is purely my opinion, there are still a few of Business, small businesses in Indonesia that still haven't done this kind of business process because maybe they think uh, the, they can still run their business with a reasonable profit. So maybe they are not encouraged to know about this kind of thing. So my question is, is operation management that involves business analytics is crucial from them, for them too? Yeah. Thank you. So yeah, I think that that's again a very very interesting question, and I was again expecting someone would ask this question. This is actually it's a matter of survival. Now. If you are not using, it's like uh, you maybe you know ostrich, right? Ostrich which uh, digs uh, it's, and puts his hand uh, his head in the sand, and thinks that because I'm not looking at the world outside, nobody is looking at me as well, right? So the same pressure is there on companies. So if we think we are making profit, that will not be there for very long because someone else would start using those things and then we will be at disadvantage. Now, there are softwares, free softwares, cheap, where you can just start analyzing very basic things. So for example, there's a small company which is selling uh, Nasi Lemak, for example, right? Now they have customers every day. They are getting customers for them. They want to make more profit. Now they are every day generating all those things. Uh, who's buying what? Are they taking, uh, having Nasi Lemak with the uh, Teo or with the uh, Te Tarek or whatever, right? So they have their data every day. So if they use that software to understand the relationship between certain food items, yes, they may know that. But if they do analysis, they start finding out that I can really understand what's happening. And I'll give you a very simple, real example. Few years ago, uh, someone, uh, I was outside my house and someone gave me a very small cafeteria's brochure, right? They gave me a brochure of a cafeteria. I opened it, I saw, okay, uh, this is the first time I'm seeing, I called them and I ordered them. The first thing they asked was, they said, from where you got this brochure? You got that from this building? I said, yes. So that was a very good analysis for them that, okay, they sent five, six boys that day, and they were trying to understand which boy was more effective, which area was more effective. And from that point on, they start building on advertising in that area, and that's how you big. Are you with me? What I'm trying to say here? Is, is that clear? So we really need to get this right that these things are only for big businesses. No, it's important for everyone. In order to survive, we really need to understand our customers. And now, because technology is so, so easy that anyone can do that. Even an Excel sheet, your data of customers, everyday data, you can identify different trends. On what day I make, I sell more uh, Nasi Lemak, on what day I sell more data, like on what all those trends. And I can start coming up with offers, selling uh, some items together and things like that. And that's how it goes. 
Yeah. Okay, so Zalfa, you have more questions or is that clear enough? No, it's, it, it is very clear. Thank you, Dr. Sarada. Thank you, Emma. Really appreciate it. Okay, participant, any other question to Dr. Sada? Uh, I think to encourage students to ask Dr. Sada, I have a question relating to Zalfa question. Yeah. Uh, maybe uh, the, you explained that we can use a software for the small business, but uh, some Indonesia, Indonesian people uh, doesn't have uh, literacy to use the software. Could you uh, give a, an example of data analysis, the simple data analysis for that people? Yeah. Okay. So I, I can show you, for example, uh, I use uh, a one very simple software. It's called Rapid Miner. This software is free right? And uh, for basic use, if this software is free, what you need to do is obviously, if nobody knows if someone is illiterate, what they can do, they can work with someone, they can uh, bring some student, a part time student who can go once a day, once a week, all their data and do that analysis on on rapid minor. Even Excel can do some basic analysis, what's happening, which was their highest selling product, what were two products related and things like that. But softwares like Rapid Miner all, they are extremely easy to use. And any student, undergrad student, all they need to do is maybe two, three hours, one day they will know basics. So if that small company is collecting information somewhere either on, on paper and then translating that into some Excel and things like that. All you need to do is plug that into a Rapid Miner and then it gives you relationships. It, it predicts uh, what is chances of someone leaving and churn rate and things like that. So much can be done. And when you start seeing value from this, then you go on and hire someone who's full time and things like that. But you can first start from that very basic operation. And if you are not illiterate, uh, if you are uh, illiterate in using, which is very normal in small companies, especially those who are selling food and, and things like that, they can uh, start by hiring people and that could be a good opportunity for the students to work part time and gain experience. I, I personally remember just a quick example when I was uh, in Malaysia. Uh, one company, very, very old company, uh, it was investment company, but they had all their processes uh, manual. Everything was through phone and things like that. So this person came to my university for some uh, some work and we were discussing. I said, I can help you to, uh, to have your operation management process set up. He said, okay, you send it. And if you really like, but I'm, I'm not interested. I said, no, that'll give us you an opportunity. So what actually happened was three of my final year students, they went there, they mapped their process and they created a very simple all on Google docs, their process. And this process was created and it was so helpful for that company that he said for similar product I asked outside and they said it will cost them half million ringgit, similar product. But those final year students with no previous experience, they created a business process for this small company. And then this small company hired one of our students. So that's how opportunities come. That's how, that's the role of universities to work with small companies around you. That not only gives opportunity for students, but also helps them to grow. Is, is that clear? Yes, clear. I think the role of university is give a community service to upgrade a small business scale. Exactly, exactly. And also give experience to our own students. So they can work on there, they, they can learn and, and improve. It's even simple, improving a simple operation in cafeteria. Simple, let them observe what's happening and give ideas fresh pair of, from their fresh eyes, give ideas. Why are you doing like this? Question that, okay, why can't you do that on Google Doc? Simple, free, right? 
why don't you don't need anything you can do everything pretty much on your mobiles everyone carries cheap at least uh, smartphones now you can do all those things using a smartphone you don't need any hardware at, at all okay i think it's clear for my question okay participant any other question no other question no question okay okay mr faiz i will have any question for dr sadat uh no i well i just want to just give an insight to jujan yeah that's uh, correct yeah i put the link for maybe that's the correct link dr sadat in the chat room the rapid miner the software that you told yeah, before yeah that's right that's right okay yeah that's uh, i saw in the yeah in the license there is a educational license then yeah, i think yeah, you exactly. can Use education that. license is very powerful you can do so many things but even a small company they can download basic version that's free yeah okay that's uh, that's correct i think uh, most of you now in the third semester right so later in the seventh semester you have you will have a course called uh, business consulting project when you will go to small medium enterprise and then analyze it i think you can use this idea and this insights from the lecture so dr sadat in the seventh semester they will have uh, some uh, they will have a course called uh, business consulting project that they will act as as an consultant as a right. consultant from the for the small medium enterprise and they will usually involve uh, find the small medium enterprise in maybe in the city or in surabaya then they usually will come and help to address the problem to overcome the problem that usually uh, faced by the small medium enterprise such as maybe they help to create the social media and even maybe you can use this insight from this lecture to help them to analyze the data just like a simple data analysis and that's maybe a wonderful uh, approach to them and even you can create a powerful uh, approach to the yeah, small medium enterprise maybe that's uh, some insights for me Uh, I will give my microphone back to Mr. Dika. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Faiz. Okay, participant. Participant, any other question? No question. Okay. Uh, maybe because there are no other question uh, today lecture, I think is uh, enough. But The conclusion from me is, uh, we know that today is the digital era that uh, many on huge volume of data is on the internet. And we can use that the data to, we can use the data for our operation and we can, we can use the data for our operation and that uh, benefit will give a competitive advantage to the company. And uh, the, that the use of data analysis will not increase the um, unemployment rate, but it will maximize the combination of human to use data for business decision. Okay, I think enough for me. Thank you, Dr. Saadat, to give the lecture for our student. Many thank you from business management of ITS. And I will give the mic back to Mas Danis. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Dika. Uh, thank you, Mr. Saadat. So uh, if you any question, we, we could not answer to the presentation. Please do not hesitate to let us know by email to mbusiness.ats.ac.id. And we have reached the end of this event. Uh, we would like to express our great appreciation for the guest speaker, Dr. Sadat, uh, who already shared uh, his knowledge to us. We also would like to thank all participants today. And we do hope everyone enjoy an insightful and 
productive meeting. So uh, the last session, uh, on behalf of this organizing committee, as the MC, we would like to apologize uh, for any inconvenience that might be uh, happen during this event. And uh, I would like to invite you all in the virtual group photo. So please can share your best smiles by uh, turning on the video. And I will start uh, counting. Maybe you can turn on the video. Okay. Okay, so I'll count five, four, three, two, one. Once again, wait. All right, three, two, one, smile. Okay, uh, thank you for all participants and thank you, uh, Mr. Sadat and thank you, Mr. Dika. Uh, have a good day and wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. It's really a pleasure and honor uh, to address uh, all of you. And I look forward to more uh, uh, participation. I would love to uh, see you all face to face, inshallah, when things settle down. I really look sure. forward to and then sure. Sure, Dr. Shadab. Yeah, maybe, maybe uh, I think next semester or something I can and uh, talk about some other other aspects of this. Right? So I, I look forward to that. All the best and see you inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you. Wa alaikum salam.